What's going on? It's your boy Sermon at Sermon's Domain on Twitter. From 2013 to 2016, Black spent 10,000 hours working towards becoming world class in the field of R&B. The end result was an extraordinary debut album titled Free Black that has been working to set him up for a lengthy career. This is somebody who clearly studied, who clearly understood what it means to be an artist. He came in with his own sound. And in the year since, in the two years since his debut album, he's been working on his follow-up titled East Atlanta Love Letter. Now, if Free Black was the product of 10,000 hours, then East Atlanta Love Letter is the refinement of that. No matter what you do in life, there's always room for improvement, and Black understands that a lot more than many artists. This album is not going to break any new ground. Don't expect Black to sound different than he did on his debut album. The big thing here is that he's improved on everything that made his debut album extraordinary. Black understands his sound and his audience enough to keep building on what makes him great. As an artist, especially in R&B, that's all you can really ask for. R&B artists can go decades with the same style of music. It's not like rap where, you know, you kind of, you can get stale. R&B, it's just, it's a different ball game. As long as you know the melody and lyrics and sticking to the sound that works for you, then you'll have a really long career. The songwriting on East Atlanta Love Letter is a lot more tightened up than his debut album. I think Black is really good at articulating love and heartbreak, you know, switching between the two and interweaving them throughout the album. There's simple thoughts as well as complex ones. Black understands when to alternate between, you know, going real simple on this beat to getting more complex on this one. His pen game has never felt better than it does on East Atlanta Love Letter. One of the best records on this album is titled Sorry. It's very emotionally heavy. I'm listening to this song over and over and over and over and over again. Say that like 20 more times. I, I don't know how many times I've listened to this album. But Sorry is one of the standouts because... I feel like it has all the elements of a timeless R&B classic. Now, it's, it's early to say, but I feel like as music listeners, sometimes we do have that, that edge. Like, we, do, we can hear something and we're like, yeah, this is going to stick with us for many years. Sorry is just one of those records. Towards the end, he says some of my favorite lines on the album, and this is really what inspired me to think that this could one day be one of the timeless R&B songs of this generation. He said, Haven't I already shown what it's like to love someone so much you treat their heart like it was your own? Now, all the R&B greats in the world would love that line. I have no doubt that... Those type of lines of what R&B is about. It's about connecting with you. And so long before I thought that Sorry could be this timeless R&B classic one day, like those lines jumped out at me the first listen. And they stuck with me until the song kept building and building with each listen. This past weekend, I went on vacation to LA just a couple days. And East Atlanta Love Letter was essentially the soundtrack to my flights there and back. Because of that, I was able to listen to this album more than most albums I review. And I was able to start to pick up on little things in the production, the way that he says things. On Loaded Gun, uh, one of the examples I had was how throughout the entire song, in the background, you have this like little buildup. And it goes away and it comes back um, throughout the song. But like towards the very end, like the last few lines is where it works the best because the lines before um, the buildup just stops. He said, I got one baby, that's one lady I'm going to answer to. She be the reason I'm writing my wrongs and shit. And then the, the buildup in the background, the sound just goes away and then he delivers the final line 
uh, love is the reason I'm writing these songs and shit. So for me, it's just like the little things like that that I kind of picked up on and I was like, this is, this is cool. It's enough to discuss in a review, I feel. We have to briefly talk about the record Stan. This is the last song on the album. I like that Black, if only for five minutes, is able to take the term and put it to this beautiful album closure song. Like he takes the term and he equates it to love. Like, if you're a stand for me, this relationship is going to work, it's going to sustain, we're going to fall deep in love. Um, and I like that. I really like that he's kind of spinning the concept. I'm surprised nobody's actually ever did that before. So props to Black for this album outro. On East Atlanta Love Letter, Black has just the right amount of features. No more, no less. Literally, it's Future, J. Cole, Khalid, and Offset. Because of the artist he is, Black really didn't need to have a lot of guest features because he's able to carry the album on his own. So when the guest features do pop up, each one is there to only enhance the listening experience. On Pretty Little Fears, J. Cole comes through with a... Uh, Another amazing guest feature. I love that he is getting into the side of poetry and talking about his wife on this verse. While Black has a sort of a contrast where he's talking about uh, a breakup. J. Cole says, you're the flower that I gotta protect and keep you alive in the winter time. Like that right there, that, that's poetry lines. And so I like that J. Cole um, definitely feels strong enough about his marriage to write this sort of verse that is just memorable. I know we, we throw out the term, uh, you know, do a collaboration album together a lot, but I think that Black and Future could definitely pull it off. East Atlanta Love Letter, the title track, is another amazing collaboration. It's their first time collaborating but it feels like they've known each other for a long time it's not just future coming in and doing a verse here no it's like a true collaboration the only blemish on this album is thugger's interlude now before you go to the comments and say what how are you gonna hate on that song it's the best your review sucks let me explain i like thugger's interlude i really do and I love it so much that I selfishly want it to be longer. It's only like a minute and 12 seconds. So it's not a bad song. But I just, I always have a thing about interludes where you have somebody singing or rapping and it just feels so short. And I'm just like, why make this a full song? I'm still going to play Thugger's interlude for many years to come as a part of this album. But... It was just something that I'm like, damn, this is the only thing that I would essentially change about the album. There's a line on East Atlanta Love Letter where Black says that he's an R&B nigga with a hip hop chord. That right there sums up the album really nicely. Predominantly, you're getting R&B, you're getting singing, but Black at parts of the album does bust out some rhymes. Like, I would not be opposed if Black went the, the Tyrese route one day and did a rap album entirely. That would be pretty cool to me. So that quote right there sums up exactly what you get with the album. There's love, there's heartbreak, there's a mention of Cisco's platinum blonde hair. I feel like if you liked or loved Free Black, then you will love, 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 love East Atlanta Love Letter because... Everything that made his debut album great is only improved on East Atlanta Love Letter. So those are my thoughts on Black's sophomore album, East Atlanta Love Letter. After you listen to this album, let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. And then like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, share the video. Follow me on Twitter at Sermons Domain. And as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate you for watching. And until next time, peace.